Villarreal versus Barcelona. This game was utter chaos, and so I thought it would be fun to try and stamp some structure on it by having a look at the tactics. So Villarreal typically built up with this 2-4-2-2 shape, where the key players for them were Terraz and Baena. Baena, the left winger who would come inside, and these two players often swap these roles, and they posed huge problems for Lamina and Roberto, as Barcelona's man-marking shape ended up often leaving a spare player, typically Pedraza, who raided down this left-hand side on numerous occasions. On this occasion, Barcelona able to force a long ball out of Villarreal into Sorlot. Sorlot, who later in the game, this became more of his role as Villarreal stopped playing short quite as much. Barca are able to win possession back and from that they're going to drop into initially a 4-1 shape but it'll eventually become more of just a 3-1 as Alonso will push up into quasi left wing left back position. So you get to see that a little bit better here with that 3-1 being against a man marking press by Villarreal to the man marking by both teams is what made the game so transitional note here Capui and Parejo these are your two centre midfielders and look how high they are as the game goes on they'll adjust this to prevent this space opening up for the likes of Gavi and Gundogan. Villarreal eventually give up that part of the press and Kunde, who did this often when he received the ball and he had space to drive into he took it and he drove and he forced Barcelona higher up the pitch and then we can just note the shape of Barcelona here where now we have Frank and Young dropping a little bit he did this on numerous occasions dropping to almost a left back position allowing Alonso to be able to push out more towards this left wing and still have cover and then this allows Gabi to become more of a number eight and so we get to see them take advantage of this with huge switch of possession out towards Alonso on this side of Aikunde with that Barca are able to establish a midfield possession shape but I wanted to show how Villarreal adjusted to try and reduce the space for the number eight and so we still have somewhat of a man marking system here but your two centre midfielders in Capui and Barejo are now deeper man marking the two number eights for Barcelona instead. So conceding ground but hopefully picking up the more dangerous players. And with Capui marking Gavi, that gives license for Foyth to be able to push out to Alonso more easily. So with Foyth not being dragged inside, that makes this pass out to Alonso a lot more difficult. He can't just push up here without dragging Foyth along with him and making switches into him have to be a lot more accurate. Barca do persist with this by having Romeo drop, allowing the centre-backs to split more, and having De Jong push higher. And then they've also had Gundogan, as his players been progressing, pushing over to that side to help overload it, eventually leading to Alonso still being able to drive up this left-hand side. And then I thought this was really nice to see here, where Alonso drives up the left-hand side. And they did it on the right as well, to a certain degree. They liked to get their players in a line like this, such that where Alonso played the ball from the left-hand side, he could play it into Gavi, he could play it into Gundogan, he could play it into Lewandowski. But if he plays it into the near side player, they can leave it to the next player or the next player. And then that player can then play another ball for the initial player running in behind and turn around the Villarreal defence with some quick one-twos. On this occasion, they choose not to do that, but they retain possession. We get to see them in their midfield shape, but at this point they were behind, so they were a lot more aggressive with the positioning of the fullback. So initially it was more of a 3-1 with Romeo sitting ahead of the defence and then typically Sergio Roberto staying as a third centre-back. But as they were going to try and get the three points, they pushed both Roberto and Alonso higher up and had De Jong and Romeo stay deeper with Romeo or De Jong acting as that third centre-back instead. Or with both of the fullbacks higher, this meant that it was easier for them to create in the wide spaces and then still have numbers centrally. And so we see that here with them switching player towards Lamina on the right hand side with Roberto quickly supporting and overlapping allowing Lamina to do what he'd love to do all game where he drives inside does a little bit of skills combines here with Gundogan and then looks to fire a shot inside from this inverted position fortunately for Villarreal they're able to clear it okay so let's go back to the beginning where we get to see some of what we mentioned where now we've got Frankie de Jong pulling out into that left back position Romeo as a CDM ahead with Gavi and Gundogan as your number eight and Alonso as your left winger and with Gondogan's movement uh, in combination with Lewandowski dropping, we get this really nice early chance for Gundogan, but he slightly misreads the flight of the ball and Villarreal are able to claim. On this occasion, Villarreal take a long goal kick, which they did more often in the second half, but they're forced into retreating by the Barcelona press. They actually on occasion chose to retreat as this allowed them to create space in behind Barcelona's high defensive line. I also thought this was a good example because it shows Baena narrowing, creating that problem for Roberto as he 
also tried to narrow and because their acts also narrowed dragging in Lamina that created tons of space for Pedraza. On this occasion it doesn't lead to much, it's only a matter of time. So we'll have a look at another situation where the build up from deep, they utilize the central position of Baena and he switches the ball out towards Gerard on the right hand side, allowing him to then combine with Kapue in an attacking position after his clever run to draw Christensen away. He's able to take a shot from a more central position. Unfortunately, it's blocked. But then this has to be the best example of Baena's narrow position becoming a problem with Barcelona man marking again, but then that leaving Pedraza free. He takes an absolute the amazing touch and with Baena narrow having drawn Roberto inside initially that creates the space for Baena to exploit which Pedraza using 200 IQ takes advantage of by then driving inside rather than taking the easier passing option down the line and as I mentioned this game is super transitional and we get to see that here with Pedraza driving 50-60 yards and then finishing off a slick move with an easy pass into Baena and a silky finish and in mentioning this transitional play Villarreal pretty much had to rely on counter-attacks in the second half even with their substitutions as they really struggled to impose themselves and with that thanks for watching if you've enjoyed the video consider sharing on social media giving it a like it goes a really long way and with that we're out